This is it, this is the drill that totally changed the way that I spar because if you truly understand the concepts in this video, you'll just perpetually be three steps ahead of your opponents at all times. It's, I'm able to get that inside position first. Now we filmed this course for our membership website, Magnus, with coach Brian Popejoy and Jackie Buntan. And ever since, I have been changing the way that I run my classes and seminars with an emphasis on footwork, angles, and setting traps. But listen, you need to sign up today. Why? Because tomorrow prices are increasing to $50 a month. If you sign up today, you'll get locked in at our current rate, which is just 30 bucks a month. Shane, that's so expensive. I don't have 30 bucks a month. Well, then go cancel Netflix. Go cancel Hulu because you don't need to watch them shows. You need to become a better fighter. What we'll do, we'll role play here. Specific drill that we did for a very specific opponent. So Jackie's debut in one championship was uh, against uh, Wonder Girl Fairtex, who was coming in on a, you know, on a, on a nice streak. She had stopped the two previous opponents. Um, you know, her right hand became like a very crucial element that she was using, you know, very dangerous tool. She had a lot of success with it. Watching the film, watching the film of her fights, the things that made it easier for her to deliver her strike, her big right hand, were to have people that wouldn't give her movement, people that would stay in front of her, you know, very, very head-on sort of clashes versus anybody moving. So what we ended up doing was giving Jackie that type of energy. So we do role playing, you know, partners have to be versatile. They can't just, well, that's not how I do things. Well, you know, you're going to do it this way today because this person needs to work it. And it flips back the other way as well. So, you know, you have that versatility. That's something I believe in trying to develop versatile athletes that can, they can play multiple games. Cause if you only have one method, one style, it, it limits what you can do. So anyhow, uber simple, very simple drilling. We had someone sort of plodding forward, okay, coming forward aggressively. Jackie spent a lot of time moving to her right to get away from that right hand. Because if you're constantly moving this way, it's hard for me to get set to be able to throw that. But if you stay put, it's easy to do. But if she's turning this way, she's turning that way and making a little bit of space, remember, what was it? Make space go right. Make space go right. I'm trying to make that happen. Now I know what you're going to say is like, oh, you cut them off. Yes, obviously. But didn't happen. Okay. That was something we had noticed as well. Tend to follow. She tended to follow people. Okay. So if you're not cutting people off, you're not going to get into position to make that work. So anyway, bringing this all back in, Shane, I'm going to have you coming forward. Jackie, all I want you to start with is just being able to keep range, keep distance, you know, make space, boom, go to the right. When you're in position to throw that one, two, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a try. Fair enough? Sounds and we're going to add some more to this as the, as the drill goes on. Good. Now make space and go right. Good. Make more space. Go right some more. And time. So it's funny because it's almost uh, you know it's almost too simple. It's almost too rudimentary. But that's that was the sort of the base layer of working against that, that opponent, that specific opponent, or that type of opponent. I know the space wasn't that big, but a little hard to get to it, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You find Absolutely. yourself kind of, you know, stuck like your front foot, kind of getting in the way of that rear hand. Yeah. yeah moving, to, moving to that right side. So that's the base of it. Um, another concept that we started to work into that was, okay, we're making space and going right, but then we're making our attacks drift back the other way, go to the left. Okay, but I know someone's out there raising their hand going, but, but coach, coach, if Jackie's going back to her left, isn't she moving into the power side? Yes, but it's about the timing and it's about doing this, at, like I said, timing, doing things at the right, at the right moment. So what we were able to do was drift to that side, drift to that side, drift to that side. And then while you had, like in this case, uh, you know, Wonder Girl chasing one direction, that quick change of Boom, quick change of direction on Jackie's part, got her out of position. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, you guys, if you need to see it, you can, you can watch the fight. But the gist of it here, we won't even go with attacks. We'll just show you the movement of the feet first and then start adding into the attacks. So I want you to do the same thing. 
you know, make your space, turn right, Shane starts to get close to you, then I want you to think about just breaking off to the left side, you know, just boom, changing direction and tapping off with that, with yeah. that left hand. Not a punch, don't left hook him yet. Yeah. <laughs> we'll save that for later. So making space, going to the right, circling right, and then quickly being able to pivot off to that other side. Good. Now see if you can get ahead of the punches and change direction just before Shane gets into place. All right, time. Relax a second. So we'll throw in one el more element, one more layer to that, if you will. Okay. So we did... <clears throat> We did our most basic parrying, okay? So most common, you know, left jab, orthodox opponent, it's catching or parrying it with the rear hand, with the right hand. And straight shots, you know, straight right, most common parry for that is we're parrying it with the left hand. So we're kind of having these crossing motions, okay? So another element we kind of added into that was, was what? We were knocking that jab out of the way yeah, with, the, with the left hand. People are going to say, isn't that dangerous? Again, we're talking about timing here, and we're talking about sort of game of not even inches, but centimeters, but practicing these things, okay, many thousands and thousands of times so it comes off at the right time. And there were failures, in the, you know, not, not so much in the fight, but in training, getting used to doing this thing or that thing or whatever thing you're doing. So what we're going to end up doing, well, this is how we drilled it. Jackie's going to work on keeping her distance, making her space, going right. Another element we added with keeping range was extending that lead arm, keeping that barrier between us, okay? Because then it was a matter of knowing that when, you know, Shane or in this case Wonder Girl started to break past that, I'm not going to stand here and keep my arm extended, but I know Okay, you can't touch me with certain weapons from here, but as you start to get closer, as it starts to get closer, giving her that space, so then we'd be able to break off and go that other direction, okay? So we'll just make a repeat of what we were doing back then. We'll make space, go right, all right? Let's go through this slow a couple of times. So make space, go right, keep Shane at the end of that extended left arm. And then when it got into range here, freeze for a second, and we'll turn you guys a few degrees where we can see. This is where that break off to that other side start to happen. So Shane shooting his jab, Jackie's knocking it to the inside. But the other thing she's doing, darn near simultaneously, she's shooting her own overhand right. Boom. So shooting that shot. So if Shane is coming with the jab and with that right hand, breaking, making space, and then changing that direction, with that little directional change and with that little knock of that lead hand, Puts you out of position, gets her head offline. Which way are you going, Shane? Chasing when you were going after her, this going to your left. left. And now Jackie's going, she's changed direction, going, going right, basically walking you into that right hand. Okay? It's about, I'll, I'll slide in for a second. It's about positioning. If I'm trying to do that here and shoot that jab and the right hand's behind it, I'm trying to do it this way, then it's a little bit of. You know, it's a little bit more of a, it's a significant more of a, a gamble, okay? But if positionally I'm getting, I'm out here just a few centimeters off to the side, a few inches off to the side, and he's shooting that jab, it's, I'm able to get that inside position first or get that position to make my right hand work because I'm not coming here. We're not on the same line, and you shoot, I shoot. Bang, trading in this way. We had worked on getting that angle and getting, boom, getting that position. To, to make that right hand work. Not going to lie to you. A couple people are going to go, hey, yeah, yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, well, watch, watch the fight. <laughs> watch it happen. And then, oh, just to you know, piggyback on top of that, it wasn't the right hand by itself. We are changing direction, hit the right hand, following up with the left hook, and then she's out the side door to that side. The speed, the precision, the volume as well. Oh! Make that space, keep at bay. Yeah. 
and time. So you notice in, in this drilling, not going 100%, obviously. And in this case, not even like putting those punches really on target since they are mouthpieceless tonight. So one thing I noticed moving around is Jackie was always one beat ahead since she was drawing me in. She would see the telegraph because I would have to take that extra step before shooting off my punch. So she knew when it was coming. And since she was, it was on her timing, I feel like she was always going to be one beat ahead of me. So if we could just move around and, and demonstrate that real quick. Like with her drawing me in, she's waiting and she's got that extended arm. And as I step in, she's inviting me in. I don't realize that I'm stepping into the range that she wants me at. Absolutely. So now I'm stepping in with my one, two. Bang, and I'm running directly into that, that car crash there. And yep. when you do this drill, like even though it seems boring, but to do this layered like this, you'll really start to feel it, especially being in this position, going against the, the counter fighter, how, how challenging it is to get into proper position to be able to punch and move at the same time where she's set, she's in the good position, she's balanced, and she's, she's fighting her fight and her rhythm. Absolutely. And then, you know, just to piggyback on top of this, you know, this is going to work with a specific, like you said, sort of a specific energy. What we saw studying the film and what came out for real in the fight was, you know, was pretty much the same thing. It wasn't that, you know, our opponent was stalking forward running her out of space, getting her out of position, you know, getting her, reacting to things that weren't there. It was a very, you know, come forward, come forward, come forward, try to hit, which is obviously, a, a, you know, an easier thing to deal with versus someone that's, okay, they're cutting you off. They're getting you responding to things. They're, you know, really trying to set up those shots, you know. So understand what you're dealing with, you know. If, if you're dealing with someone that's not just, trying to come in and boom and smash you and do that it's going to be trickier you're going to have to structure something that which we you know we'll play around with as well that involves that you know that you're going to have to have things sometimes that aren't quite as easy to get to yep. you know you gotta again you, you structure it for the opponent you have talking about okay i gotta heavy punch an opponent but it's someone that's that's you know setting you up that's making you make mistakes you gotta structure something different so don't take this one thing that we're doing here is the cure-all for that. You have to structure your methods for dealing with that appropriately. When it came time to choose a coach and a gym to highlight here on Magnus, one that really aligned with our ethos, there was no more obvious choice than Brian Popejoy and the rest of the Boxing Works crew. For those of you who don't know Coach Brian, He's done so much for the sport of Muay Thai. Uh, and when it comes to American Muay Thai, he's definition OG. He's got multiple champions. The system works, the, the theories are correct. Hi, I'm Coach Brian Popejoy. What we're gonna go through today in this course is just a broad overview of a typical fight camp that I take my athletes through. So uh, get ready, here we go, kids. <laughs> 